Good morning. The Office of Morning Prayer is found on page number 75 in the Book of Common Prayer. In the Office, we begin on page 77. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. And then we go to page number 80. Lord, open our lips, and our, our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ the Lord has ascended into heaven. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. And then on page 83, we say together, Christ our Passover, Pascha Nostrum, on page 83. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and the evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen to sleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For us in Adam all died. So also in Christ shall all be made life. Alleluia. And the first hymn this morning is hymn 603. We will sing the first and the fourth stanza. Father of orphans, 
defender of widows, God in his holy habituation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, you sent a gracious rain of God upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provisions for the poor. Sing to God. O kingdoms of the earth, sing praise to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. O God of Israel, Giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the book of Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who had been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And now we sing together Canticle 13, a song of praise. Benedictus says Domini on page 90. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of the temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high above of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all 
whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on, the, on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning. When I was young, one of my greatest fears was having to speak in front of a large group. But today I am more fearful speaking before a small camera, recording every word without feedback. At least it won't go to sleep. These are strange times. Learning how to be church without being able to gather together for worship and fellowship. For the foreseeable future, we will do the best that we can in whatever circumstance we find ourselves. I am grateful that we can still connect with each other through the many communication devices at our disposal. With our bishop's guidance, we will soon know what being church is going to look like going forward in the next phase of this pandemic. This past Thursday was the day of Christ's ascension commemorated in the church calendar. This was the last time Jesus is with his disciples in bodily form. Our reading from Acts today is a narrative of this event. Jesus had taken his disciples to Bethany which is across the Kidron Valley on the Mount of Olives. Bethany is likely where Jesus stayed when he came to Jerusalem. On this very mountain that he had come down for his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus is lifted to heaven in a cloud. What is crucial about this story is the interaction between Jesus and his disciples. They ask him, Lord, is this the time when you restore the kingdom of Israel? A material kingdom is still in the forefront of their thinking. Jesus' Jesus's answer is the key for all that is to follow. His concern is not about the future, but about the present. He says, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. God is to guide the church through power given to the followers of Jesus. The future is vested in these common folk with no blueprint to follow. This prescription still holds over 2,000 years later. The plans of God are hidden from us and we have to accept this basic mystery of life. The reading from John's Gospel takes us back to the upper room the night of the Last Supper. At the end of a long discourse, Jesus begins to pray. 
This is known as the high priestly prayer. He is no longer talking directly to the disciples, but is talking directly to God. He knows that these are his last hours on earth, but he also knows he will soon be with the Father. He makes a passionate plea that the whole process he is to go through will glorify his Father, that God be made known not only through Jesus' life and teachings, but also through his death. For me, the last sentence sums up the essence of the prayer. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is revolutionary. These common folks are to be united in some divine way to continue a movement that Jesus Christ had begun. As Paul says, when we are united in Christ, we become a new creation. We are still fully human, but have been given a spark of the divine nature. This is what the experience of living is, the dynamic tension between our human nature and our divine nature. I think that Christ is telling us that our divine nature is our true nature, our highest selves. A story is recounted by novelist Nico Kazasakis on this tension between our human tendencies and the holy. In, a remote, in the remote mountains of northern Greece, there once lived a monk who had desired all of his life to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Sepulchre, to walk three times around it, to kneel, and to return home a new person. Gradually through the years, he had saved what money he could by begging in the village nearby. And finally, near the end of his life, he had enough set aside to begin his trip. He opened the gates of the monastery and, staff in hand, set out with great anticipation on his way to Jerusalem. But no sooner had he left the cloister than he encountered a man in rags, sad, and bent to the ground, picking herbs. Where are you going, Father? the man asked. To the Holy Sepulchre, brother, by God's grace. I shall walk three times around it, kneel, and return home a different man than I am. How much money to do that do you have, Father? inquired the man. Thirty pounds, the monk answered. Give me the thirty pounds, said the beggar. I have a wife and hungry children. Give me the money. Walk three times around me then kneel and go back to the monastery. The monk thought for a moment, scratching the ground with his staff, then took the 30 pounds from his sack, gave the whole of it to the poor man, walked three times around him, knelt, and went back to the great gates of the monastery. He returned home a new person, of course, having recognized that this beggar was Christ himself. Not in some magical, faraway place, but right outside the monastery door, mysteriously close. All that he had given up came suddenly rushing back to him with a joy unforeseen. The kingdom of heaven is not a far-off place that requires a certain formula to get there. As in the story above, it was not a sense of guilt that motivated the monk. It was the recognition of what God was asking of him. He was looking with different lenses and being 
a new creation. He, in one sense, died to himself and reaped the reward of intense joy as a result. If then we are one with God, we are emanations of His Holy Spirit. We are to be guided through life by prayerful discernment of His will for us in all our relationships and activities. So whatever we do, we strive to do it under His guidance. Amen. The second hymn this morning is hymn 450. We will sing the first and the sixth stanza together. In you, Lord, is our hope. 
and we shall never hope in vain. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in whose hands are the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all those who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. Grant them your mercy and the light of your presence, that the good work which you have begun in them may be perfected. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we mind your prayers of thanksgiving or concern, either silently or out loud. God of healing and hope, you who in Jesus fills the storm and meets us in our places of uncertainty, during this time of great concern, bring out the best in all of us. Make us more aware of our dependence on each other and of the strength that comes from being one body in you. Give strength and guidance to all who work to serve the common good. All who are in danger while serving, so that we may stay well. Give comfort to the vulnerable and all who feel in danger. All who have lost loved ones and all who are facing loss of any kind. Look with mercy on all who are sick and those who have contracted illness or disease, including the coronavirus. Bless the souls of all the departed, we pray, that they may now rest in peace with all the saints in your eternal kingdom. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now to page 101, we will say the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, we are your burning servants give you humble thanks for all of your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of our world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your grace, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our 
desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.